We're going to talk about myasthenia gravis in this video. And uh, myasthenia gravis is uh, essentially a um, disorder in which you have muscle weakness. And the reason you have muscle weakness is because the um, neurotransmitter uh, that uh, is normally involved, um, which is acetylcholine, is not uh, properly moving uh, from uh, neuron to neuron in the skeletal muscle and that's why this uh, disease occurs. So before we get into everything it's important to first understand what that even means and we'll start off with the diagram. So, so a lot's going to be presented in this diagram so I'll try to make it uh, uh, clean and I think to make it clean we need to use some abbreviations otherwise I can't fit it in. ACH will be acetylcholine. ACHE will be acetylcholine esterase and I'll explain what each of these are in, in a few minutes. Um, ACHEI will be acetylcholine esterase inhibitor and finally um, ACHR is the acetylcholine receptor receptor okay now let's go back to the diagram so here is the presynaptic neuron these little circles represent uh, acetylcholine. And on this other side, we have a postsynaptic neuron. And this all sits in the skeletal muscle or skeletal muscle. And in order, in, in order for the skeletal muscle to have proper strength, this acetylcholine needs to travel from neuron to neuron. And it travels by first exiting here and then eventually being picked up over here, uh, let's, let's have a different color here, being picked up by these uh, little uh, receptors that are on this side. These um, receptors are ACHR, and I wrote it out for you. And we, uh, we can represent acetylcholine as these small purple circles. I mean, they could be anything, it doesn't really matter and they eventually bind to the receptors over here and they move from neuron to neuron. That's when it's working properly. Now unfortunately in myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis you have an autoimmune attack and what happens is you get these acetylcholine um, antibodies that come and block the acetylcholine receptors. So these are the acetylcholine receptor antibodies. I'll draw another one up here that can uh, there. That is the problem. This this acetylcholine receptor antibody prevents these acetylcholine molecules. So how how do we how do we go about uh, helping the situation? Well, this area in here is really where all the action occurs. It's called the synaptic cleft, this area, this area that, that I'm drawing, synaptic cleft. And first, let's just talk about um, uh, when acetylcholine normally breaks down. There's an enzyme that normally breaks down acetylcholine and it's called acetylcholine esterase and I've written it right here and it normally breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetate now if you can prevent this enzyme from breaking acetylcholine down then you'll have more acetylcholine in the synapse you'll have more of it and the hope is the more you have, the more 
chance you have of it binding to the acetylcholine receptor and then going to the next uh, neuron. And that's accomplished by a medication that is known as an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. And I've written that here. And these are the drugs that are used to treat myasthenia gravis and I will get into that a little bit later on. But I really want you to understand this diagram. I hope it, uh, hope it made sense. Uh, acetylcholine, esterase, uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitors um, are really the, the medications that treat this. But in order for you to understand how they work, uh, it's important to understand this diagram. So one more thing I'd like to say is that I probably already said it, but it's worth repeating, is that when these acetylcholine esterase inhibitor drugs, what they do is they inhibit this enzyme, which is acetylcholine esterase, and when you inhibit the enzyme, you don't get the breakdown of acetylcholine, which is being shown here. And when you don't get the breakdown of acetylcholine, more acetylcholine stays in the synaptic cleft, and more of it has a chance of binding to the acetylcholine receptor and even if you have a whole bunch of acetylcholine receptor antibodies preventing the binding of acetylcholine to the receptors if you the more acetylcholine you have in the synapse the more chance you have of acetylcholine passing from neuron to neuron so that is the pathophysiology so let's keep going myasthenia gravis so what, what is it? Well, it's muscle weakness, as we discussed earlier. That happens because you have antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor. And that diagram illustrated that. And those acetylcholine receptors are on that postsynaptic membrane in that diagram. So it's a postsynaptic problem. And there's another very important part of this, and that is a lot of patients, as many as 65%, will have uh, hyperplasia of their thymus. And that's uh, involved in the, in the pathology. And later you'll, I'll tell you that treatment of this not only involves those medications that I talked about, but also removal of the thymus. All right, so what are the symptoms? Well, the symptoms involve muscle weakness, but what muscles? I mean, what is muscle weakness is a very general term. What muscles are we talking about? So we are talking about muscles of the eyelid that can result in ptosis. Ptosis is a, a term that means eye drooping. They can also involve the hand. Hand grip is in, it affected. It can, invo it can involve the muscles that you use to swallow. And if you have this difficulty swallowing. Um, there's quite a, an extensive list of um, presentations, a weakness um, in the proximal limbs as well. But the uh, the the limbs and the neck muscles and all those muscles are really affected, and the initial presentation is pretty is pretty uh, uh, classic especially if you have a combination of a lot of these so if a person does present with this type of muscle weakness and and it has uh, um, has given you suspicion for myasthenia gravis how do you diagnose it well obviously the physical exam is a big part of it but fortunately there are some very specific tests that can be done the first thing is you do something called a acetylcholine esterase inhibitor test. What that means is you give these medications abbreviated, this is the abbreviation, to a person and you see if that improves their symptomatology. So the first thing you would do is you get the person to uh, exercise uh, the affected muscle to the point of fatigue. 
and then you give this acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. And if you remember, that inhibitor blocks acetylcholine esterase, and if you block the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, you have more acetylcholine in the, sy in the synapse, and that causes that uh, gives a better chance of the acetylcholine passing from neuron to neuron and if that happens the muscle can work properly it gives the muscle uh, the strength back and basically if you have recovery of muscle function after giving this acetylcholine esterase inhibitor then that's a, that's a positive test that shows that uh, this is a indication of myasthenia gravis. So remember that test. Another thing that you can do as part of the diagnosis is you measure those acetylcholine receptor antibodies that I drew in that diagram. Those are the antibodies that were blocking the acetylcholine receptors and when those antibodies block the receptors acetylcholine can't bind to them. And these can be measured in the serum as a, as a lab test. Another part of the diagnostic workup is imaging. Now remember I mentioned that uh, in up to 65% of patients with myasthenia gravis, they can have a thymoma, and thymoma, tumor of the thymus, is uh, involved in the pathology. So it's very important to detect that, because if they do indeed have it, you will need to uh, remove it. Yeah, surgically. Okay, so what is the t uh, treatment? Well, as I've already mentioned, the treatment are the acetylcholine um, esterase inhibitor inhibitor drugs, uh, abbreviated acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. Now, sometimes they're also called anti-colon esterase drugs. Don't get confused. Um, spend a little bit of time understanding all this and you won't get confused. Um, I just wanted to mention that they're sometimes given different names. Um, so what are some examples? There's a lot actually. I, I'll list uh, just a couple. There's pyridostigmine. pyridostigmine. Uh, there's another one called neostigmine. Uh, there's quite a few. Um, so those are those are the, the the drugs that are medications that are used to treat it. Okay, well we're moved on. We have graduated to the vignettes. So here we go. A 46 year old woman complains of difficulty speaking, chewing, and swallowing. So that's dysphagia. She experiences generalized weakness that increases with effort as the day goes on. Symptoms are significantly improved after taking neostigmine. It's an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. Antibodies responsible for causing the patient's condition are directed against. So what they're asking is which one of these five do we have antibodies against? Well to refresh your memory I'll draw that diagram really quickly and if you remember so what was this? That's what they're asking. And that was acetylcholine receptor. If you remember from the diagram. And that's pretty much all the questions asking. And uh, just, just so you know, that's the antibody. That's the acetylcholine receptor antibody that's blocking the acetylcholine from binding to the acetylcholine receptor. And finally, a big long one here. A 35-year-old woman comes to the office complaining of double vision. She says that for the last few weeks she has been feeling weak all over, especially at the end of the day, which is also when she thinks her double vision is most noticeable to her. She reports that she experienced similar symptoms one year ago that persisted for several weeks but did not seek medical opinion at the time because she thought it was just stress. No other complaints, no medical history, mother has grave disease, father has rheumatoid arthritis, so there's some autoimmune diseases there. Our older sister has just recently been diagnosed with lupus, another autoimmune disease. On exam she has slim, good health, vitals are normal, normal 
heart and lung sounds, bilateral ptosis, complaints of diplopia when extraocular muscles are tested, has normal strength at maximum effort, but her proximal muscles are fatigable. CBC electrolytes, thyroid stimulating hormone are unremarkable. Anti-nuclear antigen, anti-DNA antibody, and rheumatoid factor are all are negative. Anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody test is positive. So that's the test I talked about in the diagnostic workup. You arrange for an electromyelogram, which shows a decremental response to repeated nerve stimulation. The most appropriate next step is to order A. Well, of these, if you remember in the diagnostic workup, it's important to do uh, imaging, and in particular imaging to check either a CT or an MRI to check for a thymoma thy or th uh, um, hyperplasia of the thymus. And the thymus is uh, in the uh, upper part of the body. It's in the area, you know, the, the neck or the chest, whichever uh, location you would like to describe it but it's certainly not in the brain so that's out muscle biopsy probably don't need it at this time and lumbar puncture is not part of the uh, diagnostic workup of myasthenia gravis so the answer is CT of the chest